The population in Gander at the time was roughly 10,000 people. It was 10,000 people at 9 o'clock in the morning on September 11th, and by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it was 16,000 people. No town in history that I know of ever had a 65% increase in their population in three hours. The town came together, and we had people from outlying communities bring, bringing everything from beans to fresh baked bread, trying to do everything they could. Every community group for miles around took passengers off these aircraft once we started to unload them. The school bus drivers in town were on strike at the time. They left the picket line, literally left the picket line and went to the airport because they knew we were going to need buses. And the fact that they did, the town, the surrounding area did so much with really fairly limited resources. So immediately after everybody landed, we had took care of the immediate needs of the aircraft because even though the aircraft were sitting on the ground and not running, they still need fuel to run their auxiliary power units so that they have air conditioning and heat and can make meals and serve, serve food and so on inside. And aircraft also need water. So if, after everybody had landed and parked, we had to come up with a, with a system in cooperation with the ground handlers to allow them to go out and, and restock the vitals on these aircraft as it was required. The thing that surprised me the most was even though their country had just been attacked, how thankful they were for what they got. And I mean, you were dealing with everybody from the average working class people to the CEOs of major corporations that were stuck here. And everybody was grateful for, you know, the sandwich that they got and the cot they got to sleep on, even though their country had just been attacked. When we started getting ready for aircraft to depart, there were a bunch of factors coming into play. Security regulations kept changing, and sometimes changing on an hourly basis. Um, because of that, that was hard to keep up with. It was finally decided that most of the passengers, and I believe somewhere around 95 to 99% of the passengers left Gander on the aircraft that they came in on. Because of that, it made our job of getting the departures organized a little bit easier. Because, first of all, none of these passengers, and a lot of people don't realize this, none of these passengers had their baggage. All the baggage stayed on the aircraft for the five days that they were on the ground. So the baggage stayed on the aircraft. People had to identify their own bags, of course, but the baggage stayed on the aircraft, was only unloaded just prior to departure and then reloaded. Aircraft had to leave more or less in the order that we had them parked because we couldn't move certain aircraft to let other aircraft out just because of the way that they were parked. And the other problem that we sort of ran into was that aircraft don't like to sit. Airlines don't pay multi-million dollars for an aircraft to have it sit and not be used. And most of these aircraft, in some cases, sat for as much as five days. And because of that, there was additional problems of getting engines started, getting things, you know, just and minor stuff like valve sticking that would allow the not allow the engine to to start and so on. So because of that, it took sometimes a little bit longer to get them out. But they left basically in a pretty orderly fashion. And the biggest thing after everybody left was like, okay, where did all the people go? Because for five days there had been an extra 6,000 people in town.